Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Jumpin' here. I'm excited today because this is going to be our final part to the Dawn Guard DLC playthrough I've been doing for so long now. I'm so happy that this is the final part. Um, and yeah, it's going to be epic. Pretty much, we're going to storm this castle and just wreck everything. Now, the first thing that you have to be worried about as you're doing this uh, quest is... I didn't know if I could kill the Dawn Guard people. That would suck. Like, that would totally suck if you accidentally killed them, hit them with a. Just whatever. Like, you, it just, to me, I didn't want to use, like, the exploding uh, uh, Zora Bow's arrows because I thought, hey, I'm going to hurt my own people. They might attack me. They might die. Don't want to see them die. But in reality, guys, I'm pretty confident that none of the Dawn Guard people can die here. Or really, none of your faction can die. I'm if there was like an all I don't know what happens in the other path but if there is like some type of all-out war or something going on like this uh, between the dawn guard and the um, vampires then more than likely I think that um, nobody can die on either side depending on whatever side you're with so all right <clears throat> anyway so we're gonna go ahead and uh, storm this castle there's gonna be there's gonna be a decent amount of vampires trying to guard it and once we get inside we're gonna have to fight another giant group now at this point like I said I did not know if people could die did not want them to die so I wanted to check this is something you should always do when you have people with you um, after a battle like that check and see like count your casual your casualties and make sure that no one from your side is dead well, if, unless you don't care. Like, to me, if I'm doing a quest um, that there might be people who m could matter, I you know, I hate to see people die in this game. I really do. Like, I, 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 killing people is one thing, like the bad guys that you're supposed to be fighting, but having your people, like your companions or people who are following you die, that just sucks. I don't want that to happen. So when they die, normally I just reload it or something. I don't know if you guys are like that, but if you're like that too, then yeah, always count your casualties, see what's going on. Um, and like I said, I'm pretty confident none of the Dawn Guard people can die here, and if it was, if you were with the vampires at this final mission, I don't think any of them can die either, so. Pretty cool, I'm glad they did that, just because they take away that risk of just accidentally hitting your teammates and killing them, because that just happens way too much in this game. Um... And it just sucks when it does, but it just, it really just happens, like. Alright, so now we're inside. This is like the little dining room that we've seen before earlier in the, in the playthrough. And now we're pretty much attacking it, though. Um, once again, there's going to be a lot of vampire people up in here. So, you, you actually don't have to kill these people. The idea, and like, this guy's actually on my team. And uh, you can tell because he has a bow. Uh, this is a good example how they can't die. I, 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 I killed him or he went down and he took a knee instead of just dying. So, yeah, I don't think they can die. And that guy wasn't even important. Like, he wasn't Isram, he wasn't uh, Gunmar, he wasn't like the one chick. He was just some random guy. So, if he can't die, then I'm pretty sure no one can die. Alright, um, but anyway, yeah, so that's what we're doing. We're pretty much just taking out all these demon bat motherfuckers and then um once we get with, done with this we can go and fight um harkon or I, I think that's his name the vampire lord guy that's what i'll call him but anyway um yeah that's pretty much like look at this it's just confusing like <laughs> like it's so confusing that's the problem with like uh quests like this like i'm shooting my own people just as much as I'm shooting the enemy, it's just because I'm confused. Like, there's just too much going on right now um, to really know who's friends and who's foes. And especially when their health pops up like it, like it does sometimes, you'll just take out your own people thinking that um, they're bad guys or whatever. Uh, but like I said, you actually don't have to fight any of these vampires. I'm pretty confident you could probably just run to where the boss is. And then after that whole thing, when you come back out of here, I'm pretty sure all these vampires would be more likely dead. Because um, because the, the Dawn Guard would have killed them. They actually tell you that too. Like, oh, go fight. the You take out their leader while we'll fight the little guys. And you're like, oh, okay. But who wants to, who wants to do that? Everybody wants to kill all the vampires. That's the point. Um... 
Anyway, so now that we're done, pretty much, I'm going to explore a little bit. You know, we've we never been able to look around this castle if you've chosen the Dawn Guard way. Now, you can always also just, you can come back here anytime you want. Um, there's going to be a lot of stuff here that you can do and get. Um, I don't know if you could live here, like if this could be like a, somewhat of a house for you, but who knows, maybe. Uh, it'd be really cool if, like, you could live here. And I'm, and I'm sure if you take the vampire away, you could live here. Because you become uh, the vampire lord, so that would make sense. But, yeah, you know, there's a lot of really, really cool stuff in this castle. This castle's a really cool area. Just like Fort Dawnguard's really cool, the castle's really cool. And in, in reality, all the areas in the DLC has been amazing, to be honest. I thought they were all really awesome and unique and all that kind of good stuff, and I really have enjoyed this uh, playthrough, and I really have enjoyed the DLC, and I do recommend it to anyone. Alright, so right here, this is where um, Harkon's going to be, and we're going to talk to him, confront him, and pretty much we're going to have our final battle that we've been building up for so long. Serana, my darling, I see you still. You know why we're here. Of course I do. You disappoint me, Serana. You've taken everything I provided for you and thrown it all away for this pathetic being. Provided for me? You're insane. You've destroyed our family. You've killed other vampires all over some prophecy that we barely understand. No more. I'm done with you. You will not touch her. So, I see this dragon has fangs. Your voice drips with the venom of your mother's influence. How alike you've become. No. Because unlike her, I'm not afraid of you. Not anymore. And you. It appears I have you to thank for turning my daughter against me. I knew it was only a matter of time before she'd return with hatred in her heart. A small price to pay for the betterment of our kind. Yes, yes, always the noble vampire hunter. And what happens when you've slain me? Is Valerica next? Is Serana? Then my daughter is truly lost. She died the moment she accepted a mortal into her life. Yes, quite. I'm growing weary of speaking to you and my traitorous daughter. I'll give you a single chance to turn over the bow to me. There will not be a second. Like, who the hell would really give this guy the bow? For real? Well, After all that, to get it? No Come on now. Choice. Alright, so this is going to be the fight. I equipped uh, Azora's bow just to um, pretty much be epic at the end. Uh, unfortunately, I, I don't have enough sun um, hollowed arrows, though. And this bow really doesn't have a really good charge, to be honest. But still, it's a really cool bow because every time you shoot an enemy with it, or I don't know if it's the arrows or the bow or what, but every time you shoot an enemy with it, yeah, they blow up in sun. And then occasionally, he's going to... Um, go into that barrier area and to get him out um i think he regenerates health if he stays in there so to get him out you have to hit him with one of these arrows and that's one of the things if you give him the bow you lose the bow for the fight and that's stupid because <laughs> you actually still have to fight him i've actually i actually tried that uh giving him the bow and see what would happen see if like at the end you could just switch sides because that would be really dumb like all of a sudden you know you've been doing this the whole game being a vampire hunter all of a sudden at the end you're like oh yeah okay let's work with this guy now um that would be really stupid but all right this fight as you can tell yeah he does regenerate health though um he probably actually regenerates health from you because of the vampire lord attack so that's the part that kind of sucks but overall though yeah, overall though I, I don't know i like i can't really judge if he would be easy if you don't have broken weapons like that is the truth i can't judge that because i really don't know 
but I just think that he probably would be really easy with a sword. Like, if you wanted to just fight him with any regular melee weapon, it would be extremely easy just to whack him with the melee weapon, and then he would eventually occasionally retreat to that, like, um, to his little force field that he puts up or whatever, and then every time that happens, all you have to do is switch to the bow and shoot him with the bow. And he, you could kill him about 10 times faster if you do it that way than the way I did it, which was just to try to be epic and just use the bow the whole time. Um, cause that's kind of how they act like, that's kind of like what they act like you needed to do. I thought maybe this bow was the only way to actually hurt him or kill him. Cause otherwise, couldn't I just have uh, swarmed the, uh, stormed the castle and just killed him like a long time ago? I mean, we've been building this whole, this whole DLC has been revolved around getting this weapon to kill him so <laughs> that's pretty much the point um i don't know if gargoyles are counted as undead they might be i, I don't really know but anyway yeah, like i said you just like you need to stay on him though because when he's invisible or when he is in the force field i think he regenerates health and if you sit here and you just fight these gargoyles they're gonna keep respawning and it's a big waste of time so don't be like me don't be an idiot um just go ahead and um just go ahead and like fight him. Just pay attention to him, cause she will pretty much fight the gargoyles for you. All right, he's pretty much all but dead. I just gotta freaking hit him, and I don't know where he is. Um, actually, there he is. Your own father. Sucks for you. Now that's done. I'm not sure. I'll probably stay with the Dawn Guard for as long as they'll let me. They're respectable fighters, and I think they see the benefits of having a vampire on their side now. Of course, if you've got any more adventures planned. So she could stay a companion, that's which is pretty awesome because she's a pretty dope companion in the game. And yeah, we're pretty much done, guys. Like, that was pretty much it. Um. Like, you can actually now have her turn you into a vampire. So, Isram will magically appear at this moment. Sometimes he won't. I'm just warning you. And if he doesn't appear, your game's probably glitch and he'll, like, just be gone forever. But at this point, he doesn't matter anymore because, at least I don't think he matters because we're pretty much all but done. So there's really nothing else to do for the Dawn Guard. The only thing you can do is little, like, tiny quests. I'm going to loot his body. He has, the only unique thing he really has is his sword, his You've already got the. You could have already got the royal Dead. vampire armor, all that kind and of the stuff. The prophecy dies with him. I. I suppose this is difficult for you. I think my father really died a long time ago. This was just the end of something else. I did what needed to be done. Nothing more. I think perhaps. I think you did more than that. You have my thanks. Alrighty, so like I said, that's pretty much it though, guys. Um, but as you can tell right, right here, you can at any time now have her turn you into a vampire, which is really cool. You can also have her give you arrows, the arrows to uh, dim out the sun as well. She can coat the elven arrows with the blood, and you can shoot out the sun and get an achievement if you want to do that. Um, but yeah, you know that's the thing. Like You can become a vampire if you want. Um, Anyway, guys, the one thing I really wanted to say, though, is I really appreciated all the support I got for this uh, playthrough, all the comments, all the likes. Um, my subscribers are everything to me, and this is just a fun little side project I've been doing. But, of course, I'm going to go back and do all the stuff I've been, you know, I'm going to go back and do my Mass Effect and do whatever game in the future that you guys might want to see. But overall, though, yeah, you know, this has just been um, fun to do. I, I, love, Sky, I love Skyrim. I love, um, Bezia. <laughs> I know I fucked up with those words this whole playthrough, but whatever. Um, anyway, but yeah, guys, like I said, so this is pretty much it. I'm going to become a vampire lord and look all epic. Um, yeah, but I really hope you guys enjoy this whole playthrough. Um, please comment, guys. Please like. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So peace out, guys.